Again, I keep saying that this is supposed to be a secular government, but there are people that would like it to change, including some people within government. I stated before in another vid, the vid when I was um, commenting to um, p the political piss take guys, that leadership, especially practiced today, and even in the past, it's not really about helping people or guiding them to the right path. I mean, true leadership is. And at, once you guide them to where they need to go, you're supposed to step down and let somebody else take over. But leadership these days is more about how can I stay on top for as long as possible. And as I pointed out before, and people can do the research on this, you stay on top by keeping people dumb and as powerless and without knowledge as much as possible. You cannot have an informed populace. If you do, it's risking your rulership. And if you want to stay on top, you have to keep people in superstitions. Government likes it that there's a lot of religious fanatics out there who are believing in things that cannot be proven. Because this means that you're dealing with a highly gullible group of people. Now, it doesn't matter if these are good people morally, if they actually happen to be intelligent in other ways. The fact is, they are gullible. They're easily led from one direction to the next. Now, if you're trying to stay on top and keep things in a muddled state so that nobody knows what the hell is going on, who would you rather want to lead? A group of slightly confused people who nonetheless believe in secularism and don't believe in superstitions, or a group of easily confused, easily misled people who believe in superstitions? Religious people are a lot easier to lead as long as you keep saying that God's on your side. Because, let's, let's be honest, as sarcastic and cynical as this is going to sound, and I'm sorry if this is going to upset a couple of people, but look, if you've got a group of people who believe that human beings are walking side by side with dinosaurs, that means you've got a group of people who believe anything. Who would you want your power base to be? If you're somebody who wants to stay on top, if you're you know, that type of benevolent person. This is why things are the way they are. And why politics runs the way it is, why they can do crazy smear campaigns saying, well, this guy's not Christian, oh my God! This person's an atheist, oh my God! Never mind, it has nothing to do with the capabilities to run a country. It's, you get a lot, of, and I understand if religious people get upset when I point these things out, because there are quite a few religious people out there that are not this gullible, nor are they this stupid. It's just a belief of theirs. Their, religions are supposed to be your own freaking business. Malcolm X was a Muslim, but he used to say in his later speeches, you should keep your religion at home in the closet. Keep it between you and your God. And he added one little jab, said, because it hasn't, if it has not done more for you than it has, you should forget it anyway. He had addressed that to um, black people about when they were fighting for freedom and stuff. But I think that works for everybody, to be honest. That's the way religion should be. Even, even Christian Savior, Jesus, stated, when you pray, do not do as the heathens do, going to church and making a big deal about, oh, look at me, I'm praying. He said for people to go into their room, their homes into their room, and lock the door and pray directly to their God. Make it a private affair. But this whole thing about trying to turn religion into government and trying to force all these religious laws and, you know, you're against abortion because, you know, it's a, a, it's a, a God-mandated thing. Um, you're, you're for fighting in, um, in Israel because it's a God-mandated thing. you got a president saying, I believe I'm, I'm doing this because I believe God wants me to do it. All this bullshit should not be happening, not just because of the fact that there is a clear distinction stated in the Constitution of a separation between church and state, there is supposed to be a clear distinction, a clear separation. Not only should that be something to keep all this religion out, but it's just simple common sense. Re your religion is supposed to be for yourself. Jesus himself said, keep things for Caesar, um, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, give to God what belongs to God. Now Caesar in this sense means the government. Whatever works for government is supposed to stay with government. Whatever works for religion is supposed to stay in religion. And that's the way it's supposed to be. It's wise work, because if you keep religion just to your own freaking self, then you'll be able to live with a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of different religions, and get along because you're not trying to cram your own freaking beliefs down the other person's throat. I'm running out of time, so I want to add this one last point. If there is anyone watching this video who still believes that a government that is run by someone who is completely religious would be a well-run country, Take a look at Muslim countries. Their theocracies, look how well they're getting along. Look how many rights their people have. 
Well, it's just because it's Islam. Because people love villainizing, um, making a villain out of Islam. I mean, yeah, I understand. There are a lot of crazy fanatics there, but there's quite a few in other religions too. Christianity itself. Okay, forget a Muslim country. Why don't you look in the past? Take a look at the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages. Take a look at Constantinople, what happened back then. Research that and then come back to me and talk to me how great a theocracy is. Secular governments are the way to go, if we're going to bother with a government at all. And that's my take on it.